Hello and welcome to Tutorials with Larry. My name is Larry King and I hope to teach you something new today. So this is our fourth introductory tutorial on Arc Survival Evolved. Today I'm going to give you some tips on building your very first house. So this temporary base that we built in our first couple of videos, uh, it's, it's not very nice. Um, this this particular game gives us some really awesome tools for building structures. And if you're going to build yourself a shelter, you really should take your time and enjoy the building process and uh, give, uh, give your house your very own style. So this here is my current house on my current private server. Uh, we happen to be playing on the Scorched Earth map right now, so I used a lot of Adobe in my design. Uh, you can see I like to mix a lot of materials together, uh, lots of wood, uh, metal, stone, things like that. I also like to break up my house into multiple structures as well, instead of just having one big giant kind of, you know, warehouse style approach. I like to break it up into smaller structures that each kind of have their own function. But how you style your house is totally up to you. For the purposes of this video, let's just build something a little more interesting than what we have here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build some crafting tools that'll let us use some more complex recipes. Uh, you're gonna need something called a smithy and a forge. And we're gonna have to level up a little bit before we can get those. Basically the forge will let you melt raw metal and the smithy will let you build more complex recipes. So what I'm gonna do is gather a bunch of raw materials and try to level up a little bit more in the process. Personally, I like to use stone materials a lot for my houses, but unfortunately you don't get those recipes until after level 20. So we might need to stick with wood and thatch for this particular build. Real quick though, I wanted to give you a tip for gathering metal. You're gonna need this to build your smithy. Eventually you're gonna find these big raw metal rocks that you can mine. They're like metal veins, basically. Um, but for now, when you're first starting out, you wanna look for these, uh, kind of these smooth looking river stones and just get your pick, run up to them. They don't give you a lot of metal, but they give you more than a typical rock does. You see, I just got one there, but just keep at it. They'll give you some metal, and uh, that'll definitely get you started. Okay, I'm going to start gathering resources, and I will see you back here in a minute. Okay, well, I've been doing some scouting around in this area here, and this looks like probably the best place to start building our house. Um, it's close to the water, which later on you'll actually uh, get some real use out of that. Um, it's also nice and flat. And I definitely recommend when you're starting off, try to build on as flat of land as possible, uh, just because it does a little tedious to build on a slope. So the first thing I want to show you here is, let's. Uh, I built some thatch foundations. Even though I'm going to use stone foundations for for my base, uh, I want to start off with thatch, and I'll show you why. So basically, it's just kind of this looks like a good place to start our placement. Okay, let's place a couple of these. What you want to do is, once you kind of start building these, make sure they're oriented correctly. Uh, because, like, say you want this to be the front of your house, you know, is that the view you want when you walk out of your house? Or maybe you want more of that kind of view. Once you get all these placed and start building everything, you can't rotate the whole house. So you literally have to tear it down and start over. So uh, the idea is to start with sort of cheap materials. Thatch is really easy to build. And uh, if you don't quite like that placement, then just tear it down. So walk up to one of these, hold down the E key, and you can demolish them. When you do demolish something, you get half of those resources back in your inventory. So let's try, say, that's the placement we want, something like this. So let's grab one of these again. I guess I can put away my slingshot. Yeah, I think that's good orientation there. And then... We'll just place a couple, oops, didn't mean to place that there. So here's what you can do is you can actually walk up to it. You have 30 seconds um, and that sort of actually depends on the server you're playing on. If the server admin extends that, then uh, that's awfully nice of them, but typically you only have 30 seconds. Once you drop something to just pick it up and you don't actually destroy it, you pick up the raw item that you just put down. 
Okay, so just for demonstration purposes here, uh, what you can do once you are happy with all of your placement of all your foundations, you can actually take the material that you really want, in this case stone, and you can actually go up to one of these, and you see how it kind of overlaps? If you just drop it there, it actually replaces that thatch item. So what's really cool about that is you still get half the resources back, but if you have anything built on top of the thatch, if you were to destroy that thatch, those items that were built on top would also get destroyed, and that really sucks. So what you really wanna do is, if you're gonna do this technique, get everything in place, and then just replace your foundations with the ones that you really want. Okay, I'm gonna keep placing more of these. I actually have to build some more. But what you wanna do as another option is if you walk up to any item in the game, and if you hold down the E key, you've got your radial menu. You've got this option here, it's a switch to block. Not every buildable item has the ability to do that, but it's basically an alternate appearance. So if I do this, you can see kind of along the base of the foundation, it's actually, uh, I don't know, I think a little bit more attractive than the standard stone foundation. So you have to go this and, and do that to every single one of these. But it gives it a real nice look. Okay, I'm gonna keep placing more of these and I'll be back once the foundation's all laid. Okay, I think this is a bit of an interesting shape. A little bit nicer than just a plain old rectangle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start placing my walls. But I wanted to give you another tip here. So if you pull out one of your walls and drop it right on the edge of the foundation, you can see these items actually have two sides. Not all buildable items do, but these, uh, these particular ones do. So let me go ahead and pick these up. So while you're placing these items, if you press the E key on your keyboard, you know, your universal key that does everything, see it actually sort of flips that wall texture. So if you prefer this, you know, this more raw sort of, you know, I guess uh, finished version facing outward versus the, uh, the unfinished version, you could do it that way if you want. Um, personally, I like it the other way, but it's, you know, it, it gives you some options for some different variety. Okay, now, before I place any more wood walls, I want to show you guys another tip here. So you can build these things, these wooden fence foundations. So what these are, it's just basically sort of a, just a, a wooden plank on sort of two pegs. Um, it's a little hard to see, but what it's actually doing here is snapping to the edge of the foundation. What these are really designed for is you can kind of place them out there anywhere in the wilderness, like on the ground here. And if you were to grab a wall, the wall just snaps right to it. Um, otherwise, you can't really just place the wall on the on the regular ground. So that's what these are kind of for. So if you want to build kind of a fence around your, you know, around your land or around your uh, your home, you could do that. But there's another really cool feature here. Uh, if you grab one of these fence foundations and snap it to the edge of your stone foundation or wood foundation or whatever you happen to be using, you can get a pillar. So I've got the stone pillar here. Normally, uh, those won't snap always to the quarter of your foundation. It's kind of annoying. But these, these wooden fence uh, posts here will actually let you do that. So you just drop it right on the edge of your foundation and then you can drop that pillar right there. Now the pillars here for this particular structure don't do anything other than just give it kind of a nice aesthetic. So if that's kind of the look you're looking for, uh, use these uh, these wooden foundations here. Uh, snap them to the edge of your stone foundations or whatever you're using. And uh, you can see they stick out a little bit, but it, it really, you know, it kind of blends in very well once you get all your walls up. So I'll go ahead and... Ah, look chaos over there. I'll go ahead and get all my walls put up here and I'll be back in just a minute. 
Okay, I think that's starting to look pretty good. So I just have a couple more pieces to put on here, but I wanted to show you first of all how doors work. So in order to put a door in your build, you've got to first build a door frame. Now I like the look of the double doors, so in order to put a double door down, you have to build what's called a double door frame. So once you do that, then you can grab your double door, just drop it right in place. Now doors have more options if you hold down the E key. Um, obviously you can just open them if you want, which you can open any door just by tapping the letter E. They do not close automatically, so you have to make sure and tap the letter E again if you want to keep dinos out. Now, another thing you can do with these is you can actually set these pin codes and lock them. So if you're playing on a server with, uh, with lots of people and you want to keep your house locked down, keep all your stuff safe, you can actually uh, create pin codes for your doors so that they're private. Okay, so let's place the last couple pieces here that we need to do. The other thing I wanted to show you is how things stack in the game. So you can see I've got these pillars down here. Um, again, the pillars don't really add any sort of structural value to the house. They, uh, they're they just for pretty, really. Um, but uh, you can stack items. As you can see, I've got my walls all double stacked here. But you can do the same with these pillars. You can see how it just snaps right to the top of that other one. And I also wanted to show you the idea of replacing things like we did with the foundation earlier. So say I decide, you know, I'd love this to be a window right up here as well. You can grab your window, just hover over it, and it just replaces the item right in place there. So if you were to replace one of these ones on the bottom, it wouldn't destroy the guy above it. It would just literally just replace that wall. The last thing I want to show you guys here before we start putting roof down is these angled pieces. So you can kind of see I've got a couple placed right here. That's how you sort of create your roof line. So let's come back over here and I'll place one of these right here and there and we'll drop another one there and that'll actually create a roof line that comes all the way across over to this side here. So since I do like mixing my materials, I'm going to throw down thatch roof. Oh, we're going to need another one here too. Okay. So if I'm gonna grab one of my thatch roofs, you can kind of see how it's gonna snap into place there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep placing my roofs down, and I'll be back when it's all done. All right, well, most of the roof is put on the house, but we have ourselves a little bit of a problem here, and I can show you how to solve this when you run into this. So you can see I've got a roof line going this way, and these little sort of cutout areas are going to have a little bit different roof lines, so they're going to need to overlap a little bit. Now, let me show you a trick you can do. Okay, so that looks good there, but now you get this really weird, ugly gap. So what you want to do is actually place two more of these roofs right here. Now you've got this real ugly looking thing going on here, but we did fill the entire roof. So let's go ahead and go back to this side and do the exact same thing. You might have to mouse around a little bit there before it snaps to the right spot. Okay. Now you can create these things that are basically just called wooden ceilings. So I made a few of those. I'll show you how these work. So basically what these will do is they'll snap you know, to the top of a pillar, to these roof lines, all kinds of stuff like this. And you can drop them right in place And 
guess you get the idea here, but basically you create a ceiling inside of your home and then it'll sort of hide those weird sort of overlaps that you see in the roof lines there while also maintaining a real nice, kind of more interesting roof line than just uh, you know sort of a two-way slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and I'll be back in just a minute. Now that is beautiful sunrise. One thing about Ark, it is one of the most beautiful games I think I've ever played and sometimes you just need to enjoy the beautiful scenery around you. Anyway, I think we're pretty much done with uh, our, our build here. We've got all our roof in place. I'm just going to do a last couple bit of finishing touches. I think I want to put a little bit of a front porch out here, maybe a porch in the back as well. And then uh, we can go ahead and place our crafting machines inside and uh, call this done. See you here in a minute. Okay, that's pretty much a good start, I think. You, uh, there's a lot of room here in this house still for some of the larger crafting machines you're gonna get later on in the game, but uh, I think we got a good start here. We've got a smithy we can use to make some more complex recipes. Uh, dropped a couple of forges out here on the back, which we can use to smelt our metal. And uh, I think we're in good shape. Well, I think that looks pretty good. It's uh, definitely a good first starter home. Uh, like I said, lots of room inside for building more stuff. And uh, there's a lot of space out here on the beach as well for if you wanted to build a dino pen or, you know, when you start getting the really big, large crafting structures like the, the industrial forge and whatnot, those are pretty huge. But uh, there's plenty of space out here and uh, this is a good starting point for us. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful, and uh, if you like it, please uh, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you watching more of these. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.